Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Create Up. I hope you all are doing really well. Let's quickly begin today's session. Well, today and tomorrow, we will be looking at certain sneak peek into literary theory. I will also give you an extensive um, or like I would say comprehensive, expansive uh, handout as well on uh, the, the theory parts that we'll be discussing via these sections. So it will be helpful for you. Now, please remember whenever we talk about literary theory, uh, literary theory is an integral part of your understanding understanding of English. Now what happened was now if you look at your new updated syllabus and if you look at the, the fifth part right which which talks about English uh, in India or the, the unit which is actually dealing with English in India you need to understand that India was one of the first centers where uh, you had proper examination for English and whenever we are talking about examining people on English we also require certain strategic tools to be used or we can say scientific tools that can be used so theory became a, an important source which helped us to evaluate our answers evaluate the literature that we were reading because obviously how could you have evaluated otherwise the questions would have just been like your comprehension passages you've read the text and you're asking questions who was who but theory played a very important role to get uh, English literature as a part of your senior secondary school syllabuses in your colleges it came about so uh, this of course we will be looking at when we look at English in India, the development of English in India, how India was one of the first epicenters wherein you had proper examination taking place, where you had uh, cultural studies uh, being looked at, you had criticisms being evaluated, right? Uh, and that's the reason that tenure you had. Um, important writers who were having significant say for example like you know in the early part of 1920s 30s 40s AC Bradley's criticism became important if you were a student of Shakespeare so uh, we would of course remember that you know whenever we talk about literary theory literary theory is a vast ambit it is basically a way in which you are able to evaluate your literature better it is a way through which you are able to have an anthropological you know you are able to incorporate anthropology Anthropology. anthropology is the study of mankind, the study of cultures in which mankind is situated. So through literary theory, you're able to understand the interdisciplinary nature of our academia. We read a book, we read a text. What is the purpose of that text? How can we still use it? How is it talking to us? Right. For example, uh, when we talk about literature, a lot of our novels are the sources of a couple of movies that we see. Right. Today also I have a documentary that I will be recommending recommending all of you I hope uh so sorry keeping in view yesterday I had almonds that's the reason so sorry yeah I hope keeping in view yesterday you did watch 13th the documentary that I'd asked you to watch and this is uh, a documentary which is called a suitable girl you know, uh, why am I saying you, uh, why am I telling you to watch this documentary? I'll tell you exactly. This, this documentary is all about how women in their 30s are uh, like, you know, looking for uh, partners in India. And this is like a very recent one, just like a decade old documentary, not very old either. But still you think that, you know, feminism or uh, all the other theories that we look at, they're still relevant in today's scenario. And remember, we are able to evaluate the text and we're able to see that how the text still speaks to us. If we are looking at literary theory okay now literary theory is basically having multiple areas now let me tell you it is very important from your neck point of view the way the questions are structured you still get so many questions coming from literary theory because this is what is making literature still evergreen still relevant still important for us to study okay so uh, looking at this we will uh, like you know in today and tomorrow's section class we'll be looking at certain important aspects of literary theory that we usually uh, like you know we usually don't really look at and uh, as a part of this analysis our first lecture would be devoted to our feminist studies all right so we will be first predominantly looking at our feminist studies all right so let's quickly get started um good evening everyone all right, so let's quickly uh, dive into this and look at literary theory per se. Now, whenever you are talking about feminism, particularly, we often ignore the early feminist writers. We often ignore that, you know, if you are looking at feminism or, or if you are looking at Marxism, we're actually preparing for our cultural studies, which is now a separate topic. And also remember, when you look at feminism and when you look at Marxism and when you look at post-colonialism, you are also able to cover so many texts which are important from 
from your examination point of view okay so don't just take the study of theory to be something wherein you're looking at the the theorists who are coming uh, and the theorists who are analyzing try to look at it as a way through which you can actually study a couple of concepts okay now before we start i'd like to ask you does anyone know who this lady is like uh, the, this person that you're looking at in front of your screens does any one of you know now what happens is we all would know about mary wollstonecraft we all would know about john stuart mill but we will still not know about these important early feminists who are asked in our exams by the way so you know the first few names that we see in our papers which we are not able to recognize these are these characters right so essentially early feminism we only think mary wollstonecraft is there or we only think that john stuart mill is associated with a uh, with early feminism but you need to understand that you know you have a lot of other aspects related to early feminist writings as well which are asked in your examination it is not asked because these are early feminists they're asked because they're also part of your british history they're a part of your uh, development of literature that is the reason it's important does any one of you know who this is sneha prasad is saying is it afra ben okay anyone else uh okay good evening kavita hi traksha good evening hi lichi so quickly tell me saima all right saima's there so sneha has said that this looks like afra ben okay does anyone uh have a different answer it's not afra ben it's not afra ben that you're looking at can anyone else tell me who this lady is that you're looking at this is the reason why sometimes when in net they are giving us certain names we are not able to recognize them and that is the difference between a jrf holder and a person who's not been able to clear net you need to be making sure that you're knowing maximum amount of things remember in literature the breadth that you cover is very very important your knowledge has to be expansive okay now no don't worry at all about it this is actually olympia de gods olympia de gods is considered to be one of the first few eminent olympia the gods olympia the gods when we talk about her many books will have this name as olympe right olympia the gods now olympia the gods was one of the first few feminist writers who were talking about women's equality they were talking about how women need to be educated how you need to make sure that women are made compatible to uh, like you know the learning that men are acquiring don't just consider them to be like you know uh, as a second uh, second class citizens so you know a lot of things haven't really changed you still have an adichi uh, whom we also looked at in african writers right still talk about that feminism is required feminism is still a movement that requires a lot of uh, leverage uh, like that requires a lot of support from other people so you know these early feminists often are ignored by us right so when we talk about this woman this woman that we have there are two spellings that you will see olympe de gods or this is Olympia de Gods both are correct okay now Olympia or Olympia de Gods that you have right she was she was executed she was executed you know she was hanged why was she hanged she was hanged on the charges of sedition sedition is when you go against the state when you go against the state you have done something against the government that is called as sedition so Olympia de Gods was executed Olympia de Gods had uh, like you know she was someone on the grounds of sedition she she met an end now remember these early feminists now understand this concept this concept is very important the early feminists that we talk about okay the early feminists that we talk about these writers are actually writers who are getting influenced by french revolution or they are getting influenced in america if they are in britain if they are in europe they are getting influenced by enlightenment ideas they are getting influenced by french revolution or if they are coming from america they are getting influenced by the abolition movement because they think that their plight is similar to that of the slaves okay understand this this becomes important that these early feminists these early feminists that we are talking about if they are there in europe if they were in europe they're getting influenced by enlightenment ideals now what are these enlightenment ideals these enlightenment ideals are talking about the creation of a citizen who is actually making sure that the society progresses and these women novelists are saying not only do we require citizens who are just male but we need women to come into it in a big way then if they were coming from new england if they were coming from america they were actually getting inspired by the slave movement because they said that the condition of the slaves was similar to that of women 
so clearly the times are very conducive the times are leading to the development of feminist writings right so please understand this please understand this that whenever yes yes of course gulsita javed absolutely fanny burney is also another important example now whenever we talk about right whenever we talk about these writers these writers are important these names are coming in your exams right this is actually an important name that you have to remember now she was a playwright she was a political activist and she was a staunch supporter of french revolution she genuinely believed in the radical ideas of liberty equality and fraternity so french revolution was liberty equality and fraternity and she believed in those ideas right she was a woman who believed in these ideas so olympia de gods is important for us she is writing the rights of women way before a vindication of the rights of women is written by mary wollstonecraft so always remember that these early feminists the names have to be on your fingertips she is writing olympia de gods is writing declaration of the rights of woman and the female citizen declaration of the rights of woman and the female citizen they're talking about a citizen that you know the, the citizenship the concept of citizenship should also include women according to them right now in the 1789 during the french revolution right she appeared before the french national assembly and she advocated legal equality right to education and employment so yesterday in the lecture when we were looking at african literature and we saw an olive screener what was olive screener writing Olive Screener was writing a Plas Roman novel. What is a Plas Roman novel? A Plas Roman novel is a novel that is dealing with the countryside. Remember yesterday's lecture when we looked at our Olive Screener, we said Olive Screener was writing Plas Roman novel. Plas Roman is a kind of novel that is dealing with the countryside. That is dealing with the countryside, right? So uh, Olive Screener is also talking about in women and labor about how women's labor needs to be acknowledged and. it needs to be a part of your calculation of economic prosperity of a nation and here you have you have olympia de gods who's talking about equality in terms of rights right that only males should not inherit property right to education and employment opportunities for women they were talking about how women had to be employed only if you are employing women would you be able to make sure that you have a meaningful society right then another person right then another person will talk about an olympia de god she argued that women are free and equal to men and that has been the plea of feminism all throughout that women are free women are equivalent to men that there has to be an egalitarian society there has to be an equal society where men and women are the same so even today feminists would not we'll just look at adichie's works that you know we all should be feminists adichie saying feminism doesn't mean you reverse the gender roles feminism is not saying that men should become like you know domesticated feminism says equality is important equal opportunity equal rights equal uh, partaking in the society that is what is required according to feminism she proposed a social contract that would safeguard women against oppression in marriage she said she said it categorically right she mentioned it categorically that you know that there has to be a social contract the society needs to start coming up with social contracts so that women's rights are safeguarded so she clearly knows that you know and and by social contract she doesn't mean a legal contract of course she was talking about legal activism but she is saying that women need to be protected and she was unfortunately executed on charges of sedition there's another woman who is she can any one of you identify who she is right just like you had olympia de gorges talking about the rights of women talking about how women need education legal rights and equal opportunities similarly there's another early feminist and remember olympia de gorges is getting inspired by french revolution she was a staunch supporter of french revolution liberty equality fraternity these were ideas that had inspired her who is she very good sneha absolutely right good evening madhvi all right very very quickly i want the answer and this is also very important early feminist right so when we are talking about early feminisms a majority of time our books for example you know we usually refer to either a peter berry or a pramod k nair most of the times these names are missing in those books but they come in your exams okay so they are important for you so early feminism is about these ladies these women who are shaping the entire feminist movement for all of us 
and trying to bring across the important tenets of feminism can anyone identify who she is any one of you can give me the correct answers so this is Germaine de Stael. Germaine de Stael is also very very popular early feminist. This is Germaine de Stael. Germaine de Stael is a very popular early feminist, right? If you look at this portrait, right? If you look at this portrait, it it actually says a lot of things, right? About Germaine de Stael, about uh, like you know that was a problem with feminism actually. The initial feminism was a white feminism. It was a feminism of fashionable women. It was a feminism of women who were comfortably well equipped who were economically sound and there is a brilliant novel which we'll just look at Awakening by Kate Chopin Awakening by Kate Chopin so this comes in your American fiction uh, and this is written this is written Chopin Chopin right Kate Chopin's Awakening this talks about how only the elite women who had money only the elite women who had food only the elite women who had shelter were able to talk about these concerns and clearly you can see in this image she is having everything right she she's been she's made a pose she's trying to dress up she's been decorated so clearly you can see right you can clearly see that she is a woman of privilege all right but not conventionally beautiful as a society of that time would deem that's the only concern right Shodraksha, definitely. We will be we will be looking at so next week onwards we are actually starting with your British literature crash course. So like one of you had actually written an expansive mail to me. So uh, just like you know making sure that everyone's clear with their basics. So you would be having a very brief uh, like you know about say five to eight lecture series on British literature crash course that we'll start from next week onwards and uh, in between of course we will. Uh, do a 2020 exam analysis also Draksha fine that's a good idea we will look at 2020 exam analysis don't worry about it okay so this becomes important you need to understand this this is important for all of you this is Germaine de Stael Germaine de Stael is also an unconventional figure writing novels like Corin, Delphine these are the novels that Germaine de Stael is writing these are the novels that are written by Germaine de Stael okay so these are of course important these are of course crucial these are certain things that we have to keep in mind okay all right now her novels actually champion individual freedom her novels are dealing about this issue of individual freedom good evening Asha. Yes, Draksha, uh, I have a email so that's why you next week se crash course on British literature start ho hai. but we will also do your paper analysis, don't worry about it, okay? Her novels are talking about individual freedom. They are saying, please restructure the society. The social conventions and the gender roles are biased, they are unjust and therefore this requires a constant interrogation of your societal conventions, right? So here you have a writer like Germaine de Stael who is talking about the entire process of social transformation, right? She's saying please restructure your society, women are not being able to fit into the society properly, therefore it requires the interrogation of the structures and a replacement of these structures with a new revamped structure very similar to what Simone de Beauvoir will talk about 150 years later that you know that we are all uh, like you know wearing this entire mask that we are wearing the disguise of uh, we are playing these roles which even Judith Butler the queer uh, writer the queer theory writer will talk about that we are all pretending we are all play acting these are the roles that have been assigned to us but that's not the real self that we have so Germaine de Stael was unconventional and she spoke about these issues already, right? So this becomes important. Uh, you can just go to the, uh, the, the, yeah, yeah, don't worry Sneha, we'll help you out with that also. Uh, also, Lidji, uh, if you want to connect for any doubts that you're having, feel free to connect on the Greed Up app or uh, in the doubts column, your doubts would reach out to me or else you can just like, you know, post your doubt on the on the Telegram group. Telegram group also, you can just like post your doubt. I'll be more than happy to answer those doubts, right? So do remember that. And of course, now I think Sneha actually started with this Afra Ben. Afra Ben is also an early feminist. Afra Ben had an unconventional life. Afra Ben... 
was one of the first important professional writers to earn her living right on her own terms in a way she was a person who was looking at popular interests she was a poet at heart she was a playwright by profession she also wrote prose works the two most important prose works classroom students of afra ben orunoku and love letters of a noble man to his sister love letters of a noble man to his sister and orunoku both these works are examples of of uh, like you know the the prose writing that afra ben has engaged into so she was the first professional woman writer and she entered this world by her with her play the forced marriage 1670 right she also is considered to be a spy right she also many people believe that she had worked as a spy as well okay uh lichi uh, you can't you can't write your doubts also okay um uh... fair enough fair enough uh, maybe maybe uh, i i will figure that out. you can mention it in the comment section then right you can mention it in the comment section i'll be more than happy to help you out over there or else uh, maybe i think i will just cross check i think maybe you can you can get in touch with me on my grade up uh, the grade up email id maybe then right if you have any doubts yeah Uh, okay, so so do keep that in mind. I will check that. I will check that. Lichi, don't worry. Otherwise, till the time you can write in the comment section. The comment section is not the live chat. So there, these are the live chats. Then there is the comment section. There you can write it. I mostly check the comments, uh, mm -hmm. especially like you know for the video that's very recent. Okay, so do remember. Yeah, Harsh, please tell me what doubt do you have. So do remember that you know Afra Ben is one of the first few writers. <laughs> yeah harsh you can tell me what is your doubt and sneha i will i will check that okay on the telegram i will change the setting so that all of you can also comment don't worry about it okay all right so uh, here a uh, very very important kavita i have not noticed itna zyada aa jata hai kya awaaz acha maybe maybe because you know there are a lot of corona cases around so you you better be scared okay uh okay now so afra ben is of course very important because you know afra ben is paving the way so much so that virginia wolf praised her and virginia wolf said that you know we must all pay our respects to on the tomb of afra ben because it is uh, people like afra ben who've contributed to women being uh, like you know who've contributed to the emancipation of women that women were considered now as individuals and not just as commodities to be traded off So Virginia Woolf is lavishly praising Afra Ben. Virginia Woolf says that because of people like Afra Ben, we have got to say, we've got to say in the twentieth century, we as women can say, we can voice our opinions, we can inform others about what exactly are we. feeling like very very important if we talk about like you know the first feminist in new england if the question are, is asked who is the first feminist in america or the first feminist in new england the most important first feminist in new england is actually margaret fuller margaret fuller was a part of this transcendental like you know this transcendental utopian project that uh, that was there uh, that is described in walden also written by tharo so remember tharo is there tharo you have tharo you've emerson uh, so henry david tharo emerson henry david tharo is also writing the civil disobedience which is inspiring mahatma gandhi so gandhi was inspired by leo tolstoy gandhi was inspired by uh, henry david tharo's civil disobedience that how you can shake the premise of a government by only disobeying them and don't Don't uh, use violent methods was also something that he learned from here. So Margaret Fuller was one of the people who was forming this utopian society, right? So there was this attempt to form a utopian society, just like in the European world, Coleridge Southey tried to form a utopian society, right? A near uh, which was called the Pantisocracy Society near Sisukuma Lake uh, River. So you need to make all these examples. Sure, Draksha. Don't worry about it. Govind, जब मैं हिंदी में बोलती हूँ मुझे ना मेल्स पे मेल्स आ जाते हैं कि इंग्लिश में बोलिए तो मैं थोड़ा अब यू नो वॉट यू कॉल इट थोड़ा कन्फ्यूजन में आ गई हूँ वॉट टू डू बट डोंट वरी अगर आपको कुछ नहीं समझ में आता है मे बी टेलीग्राम के थ्रू थोड़ा सपोर्ट दे के मैं उसको ज़्यादा हिंदी में बता सकती हूँ मुझे कोई दिक्कत नहीं है सच दैट्स दी ओनली थिंग ओके 
Uh, okay, Draksha, fine, fine. Draksha, but Draksha is a very sweet girl. You know, she's very patient. She tells me every time, use Hindi, use Hindi. But she's still attending the lectures, which is great. Good, good girl. Okay, don't worry. I will, I will definitely try to get come come up with a solution, Draksha, for people who are uh, more comfortable in Hindi, because I understand that a lot of us uh, are more comfortable in Hindi. But don't worry about it. I'll, I'll try to come up with a solution for that. Acha. So, ye, uh, please remember that you know he, he. Uh, whenever we are talking about Margaret Fuller, this is something that you have to understand that American feminists were also abolitionists. Okay, when you talk about American feminists, they were also abolitionists. Who are abolitionists? People who are against slavery. All the people who are against slavery are called abolitionists. This is something that you have to keep in mind. Okay. Yeah, so Liji, you don't have to worry. Uh, in these sessions, we'll continue with English only. But we'll figure out something else that, that can help the Hindi speaking lot also. Because we should all study and increase our knowledge and make sure that at least we are giving it our best shot in order to clear the exam. Because the exam is simple. You can easily clear it provided you study, right? Provided you have a genuine love for literature and paper one, you will definitely clear this exam. This exam is not <laughs> difficult, but it just requires consistency, hard work and a little smart work also. Okay, so that is important. Okay, so please remember, all right, so please remember, but you mira not grade up career go win. That's not my channel, but that's grade up's uh, channel. But yeah, you can join that. Okay, so Margaret Fuller, Margaret Fuller is actually an abolitionist. Uh, please, let's just quickly focus on this, then I will look at your doubts. She was a member of the transcendental group. This is something important. Look at this. Margaret Fuller is the editor of the Dial magazine, which was a transcendental magazine for two years. So a woman who was of formidable intelligence, she's writing woman in the 19th century. This is a collection of essays written by Margaret Fuller, woman in the 19th century. This question has come in your exam, clearly showing, and she's the editor of the dial, the dial, the journal of the transcendental. You require intelligence. You need to be a formidable intelligence in order to become an editor in those times. And here it is Fuller taking the role of an editor, trying to edit the entire complete journal herself. So Margaret Fuller, not only the first important American feminist, but also a, an, a woman with formidable knowledge of literature. She was very well read. She knew the patterns of writing. She knew the, how writers were writing, what were their concerns. She was very well versed right so please remember and appreciate the fact that you know she was a woman who was having formidable knowledge her knowledge was amazing she's writing this piece called women in the 19th century she's talking about women in the 19th century and today again we'll talk about this look at victorian novels and look at the endings in the victorian novels women will either die or they will get married Women who are uh, like, you know, a little rebellious, women who are a little unconventional, for example, Maggie Tulliver in the Mill on, or Mill on the Floss or Anna Karenina, right? These are women who are disturbing the society, therefore they have to die. So the endings will show them die, right? Whereas women, right, who are like, for example, Jane Eyre, who's a little rebellious, she will, she will be given like, you know, okay, now you better be careful now. All right, and she she also mellows down a little bit, and then she is getting this life with Rochester. So you see, the endings of these novels are something that we need to interrogate because we come to know that women who were intrepid, women who were brave, women who were rebellious, women who were witches, so to say, right, who were uh, who were breaking the rules and norms of patriarchy, they were getting uh, an end that was literally something that that people would have, would have been dreaded about right so here you have margaret fuller her first major essay the great lawsuit man versus men women versus women now this was a very important piece why i have written this you know margaret fuller was one of the first few people to say that the problem in like you know this entire fight for women's emancipation is the lack of women's solidarity she was the first person to talk about the fact that you know there is absence of solidarity among women look at the crimes in india against women a majority of crimes against women are perpetuated by women themselves mother-in-law is not happy with a daughter-in-law right uh, there is there is jealousy between two friends women are not equal in this battle women don't feel for each other women are not empathetic and margaret fuller was one of the first people to point this 
that just like Marxism requires workers of the world to unite for a revolution, similarly, feminism also requires solidarity. You being able to sympathize with the plight of other women. Can you just see the intelligence that this, this lady is having, Margaret Fuller, right? And then, of course, you have you have Harriet Martineau. Harriet Martineau is also one of your earliest earlier feminists. So can you just see? We only think about we only think about uh, Mary Wollstonecraft, but we have Jermaine D. Stale. We have Jermaine D. Stale talk about uh, like you know feminist movement uh, about equality that women need to get. Then we do have we do have Olympia Olympia de Gorges that we started with, right? We have have Afra Ben, we have Margaret Fuller. These are all names besides Mary Wollstonecraft who are early feminists and we need to know about them. Right. So Harriet Martineau, Har Harriet Martineau, uh, she was writing a book, Society in America. Now, August Comte, uh, some of you who have studied uh, sociology, you would know that, you know, sociology, the term actually came by August Comte. OK, even before August Comte had come up with the term sociology, Harriet Martineau is talking about society in America and she's exposing the imbalance in the gender roles. She's saying that there is unequal distribution of resources of intelligence of uh, like you know the societal amenities and this is something which was distressing for Harriet because she said that this is one half of the population that you're depriving of these uh, valuable uh, things so do remember society in America this book is taught telling you about the inferior status of women that how women were considered to be second class citizens and Bucci M. Chetta will write second class citizens as one of her novels, right? So Bucci M. Chetta will write about Bucci M. Chetta, the African writer will talk about second class citizens. And Harriet Martineau is talking about this notion when she's looking at society in America right? And she says that you know women's condition is similar to the condition of the slaves. That the condition of women, yes, father of sociology, absolutely, Asha. So even before, um, like, you know, August Comte had come up with the term sociology, you had Harriet uh, Martineau say that, you know, society in America and in England was, uh, was biased, was prejudiced, and the women's roles and positions were things that we had to question. Okay, so do remember that. So she was one of the first few people to highlight that, you know, the condition of women and the condition of slaves are the same. Women need to fight it out. Women need to come make sure that society is getting transformed. Okay, yes, absolutely, 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 Sneha. Tessin, very good, very good. So Tessin Hardy, Dorothy and Middlemarch, Hester Prynne, these are all brilliant examples, right? The end of women. All right, uh, here Harriet Martineau is giving us a beautiful uh, quotation from her work, The Sum and Substance of Female Education in America as in England is training women to consider marriage as a sole object in life and to pretend that they do not, they do not think so right so this entire so you know the conduct books of the times were basically books that were telling women about cookeries right about about cooking about weaving about knitting about how to be a good domesticated woman right even some of these magazines that you have they still don't really now of course some popular magazines have got a career section but otherwise magazines would only have like you know how you can make your hairstyle how you can do your manicure how you can do your pedicure how you can enhance the glow of your skin but now thankfully these magazines are coming up with a career section also for women so clearly a society training women to become domesticated, a society training women to be passive, a society training women to be unquestioning and paying obedience to patriarchy. That was important, right? The training that was done. Now, this is very, very important. It came in your AFLU entrance also, PhD entrance. The Pankhurst, the Pankhurst. The Pankhurst were the first family, right? You had Emmeline, Emmeline Pankhurst who, uh, like, you know, draft, uh, helped a lot. Uh, she helped her husband also draft the, the first, uh, like, you know, women's suffrage. What had happened is in the Victorian society, through the three reform bills that had come, the first one coming in 1832, and the subsequent two coming in we saw that you know the male suffrage was achieved in britain but what about the women women still did not have political rights women still did not have right to vote and when we talk about women suffrage so easily uh, when we are discussing feminism we clearly clearly forget the pankhurst family 
The Pankhurst family played a significant role. Emmeline, Emmeline Pankhurst was a militant suffragist. She was a militant suffragist, militant activism. Uh, see, what had happened was earlier feminism was only about writing. But later, as the movement progressed, people understood that, you know, the society is not good. The society would not just get like, you know, transformed by writing. Activism is also required. What is happening currently in terms of the farmers protest? The farmers protest is a mark of activism. They wrote multiple times to the government before they came up with this activism. They had done a lot of writing work, but that did not result in anything. So feminism earlier was related to writing, but later it transforms into activism. And the Pankhurst family is being very radically involved in the entire activist movement of feminism. So Emmeline Pankhurst, Emmeline Pankhurst is actually finding what is called as your WSPU. WSPU is your Women's Social and Political Union, Women's Social and Political Union. And her husband, Dr. Richard Pankhurst, drafted the first suffrage bill, drafted the first suffrage bill. So you can clearly see that, you know, there are people who sweat blood toil is going in order to make sure that, you know, women's suffrage is becoming a reality. Okay, so this becomes important. Sneha, there are multiple books. So uh, there, there are multiple books. Um, which are available. There is Patricia Waugh's book. Patricia Waugh is writing about uh, literary criticism and theory and she's evaluating these texts. Otherwise, these things, I will also give you a handout package. Uh, I'm just editing that so that you can get all these in one area itself, right? Because these are important. They're coming in your exams. It's not that these questions are not coming in your exams. Like in what do we study? We study first wave, second wave, third wave, and that's it, right? No, there are multiple other things when you're looking at literary theory. Literary theory is vast. Each theory requires significant surgical study and analysis. You need to be very clear with that, right? So the Pankhurst, the Pankhurst, right? There's this beautiful uh, novel, which is called Who Cooked Adam Smith's Dinner? So Adam Smith is actually the founder, one of the founding members of economics, right? Now, uh, feminists, the anti-feminists will say, look at men, they have created all the branches of knowledge. So women are saying, who cooked the who cooked the meals of Adam Smith? So Adam Smith, while he was doing all this research, etc., there was a woman behind at the cost of whom he was able to engage in the intellectual activities right similarly like you know these women are questioning that you know when milton was writing the great epic there was a woman behind him there were the, the the daughters and the wives who were supporting him at their own cost at their own intellectual cost so who has cooked adam smith's dream uh, adam smith's meal that that's a novel that is written right so you can clearly see that you know people are questioning people are now questioning and they're actively asking that why women are not getting the position that they genuinely deserve in the society and the bankers play a very crucial role right please understand that the rise of feminism that we are having the early feminist in europe this rise is because of enlightenment ideals and in america this is actually because of the fact that people are thinking that you know the condition of women is similar to the condition of the slaves so in Europe, people are now having the enlightenment idea, the French revolution ideas of liberty, equality, fraternity, and they are therefore formulating a female citizen. Similarly, in America, because there are abolitionist writers, they're questioning that if we need to get freedom for slaves, so do we have to get freedom for women. Women have uh, literally faced a lot of prejudices across and now they need to come out of the closet right and enter the world of polis the polis p-o-l-i-s the greek the greek work word polis basically means they have to reclaim the uh, like you know the, the public sphere this is actually standing for the public sphere where we have to come and earn our own living so you know this becomes important for all of us to study this becomes important for all of us to Yes, absolutely, Ashraf. So uh, Adam Smith is the economist, but Adam Smith's meals are being cooked by women. That is what feminists will talk about, right? Okay, so contemporary medical and scientific opinion during the time. So we're talking about like, you know, the 18th century, when we are talking about the late 18th century, we can clearly see people have recognized that there are natural biological differences, but then there are social and cultural differences also. That is the reason why I say that 
that when we talk about culture studies culture studies is actually if you want to clear the topic culture studies you have to be thorough with feminism marxism and post colonialism these three things have to be on your fingertips right culture studies will say for example that you know when i i'm just giving an example when i'm growing a uh, big and uh, my parents are throwing a birthday party i will get barbie dolls i will get kitchen set but if my brother is getting a birthday party he will get a bat ball he will get a he'll get a cricket set he'll get a basketball and if he if he gets a kitchen set they'll be like are they mad they're giving a boy a kitchen set right so culture studies will talk about how toys are also the starting point wherein this discrimination actually starts right culture studies will want you to interrogate the codes of uh, like you know the society which we are living in it'll ask you to evaluate the language that we are talking about right those are important aspects masculinity and femininity they are constructs they are constructs constructs that means ideologies created by the society these are ideologies created by the society and men are considered to be rational objective scientific whereas women are considered to be emotional sensual and irrational even right now so uh, when you will clear your net uh, grf in english literature many a times there are you know for example some of you who are preparing for your gate entrances right so uh, uh, particularly from literature or if you will go to any b school and you have to train uh, like you know these students uh, who are doing their masters in business administration you will ask them this question that what women leaders get they'll be like women leaders get empathy they get sympathy they get emotional aspects why a woman can be can be as strict as a man she need not be always like you know meek submissive or a man can be meek submissive as well right a man can cry equally uh, as uh, like you know as as badly as a woman so clearly please understand that you know these are this is the context in which our early feminists are writing this is the context in which our early feminists are writing right you have rousseau's emile rousseau's emile has been asked in your net exams but it's associated with feminism Rousseau's Emile Rousseau who is giving us such amazing ideas that man is born free but everywhere he is in chain Rousseau who is talking about the contemporary enlightenment world through his works is giving us a novel Emile where he's saying that education should be based on sexual difference that education for boys and girls should be different girls should be educated so that they can become good mothers and good wives whereas boys should be educated so that you know they have freedom they have autonomy they can become ideal citizens as if women don't have to become ideal citizens so a radical thinker right like, like rousseau is also saying that is what is fueling these early feminists these early feminists are saying that you know when the period is talking about enlightenment how are you not enabling us why are you trying to propagate the same uh, roles for women that were there in the society for a very long time why can't women get education why can't women work why can't women go out of the domestic sphere this is the anger that you know these are the kind of texts that feminists will reply against this is important for your understanding okay so do remember absolutely these are uh, uh, these are cultural constructs shokit para is absolutely right shokit para right these are cultural constructs which are there in the society so do remember even the conduct books like you know for example culture studies will say look at the magazines look at the magazines what will the magazines tell you how to reduce how to become slimmy uh, uh, slim uh, right how to reduce the body fat that you are having how to have a good hair style how to make sure that you know you're using the natural therapy to glow uh, glow up your skin why are you doing this because you have to be commodities fit for male consumption right that is what cultural studies will say and unfortunately the socialization of women that was taking place was taking place through these conduct books feminine virtues of modesty chastity piety meekness 
right women need to bear women need to endure women need to like you know be at the receiving end women need to have patience women need to have perseverance look at these movies of 1960s and 70s and particularly some of the movies in which like you know the uh, one movie has shabana azmi also who was radical uh, during the time but still she is having this movie where uh, like you know there's shabana azmi and i think there's munmun sen if i'm not wrong and uh, munmun sen is much more fiercer vocal she loses her husband but shabana azmi is like you know this uh, this woman who's meek submissive she waits she is perseverant and ultimately she gets her husband back so these conduct books were not teaching the correct things at all right so this becomes important uh, these are crucial things that we have to remember okay बच्चे ऐसे ही क्वेश्चन आते हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल लाइक यू नो एमिल के ऊपर यू कैन गेट अ क्वेश्चन एमिल बाय रूसो इज अ वर्क द्रक्षा ऑन विच यू कैन गेट अ क्वेश्चन यू कैन गेट अ डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन दैट कैन बी आस्ट अबाउट हु आर द प्रैंक हर्स्ट right the prankers are actually the the early feminists or you can get a question on match the following you have to match the work of germaine de stael uh maybe like you know there might be another feminist work which might be there so you get these kind of questions right match the following you can get a direct question on a work you can get a question on uh what is true about this work which one of the following is not correct these are the kind of questions that you get so if you understand it then only would you be able to uh remember it now when i'm talking about early feminism particularly through the lecture i want you to be aware that whatever the early feminist said it's true right now also so when we have the 21st century writer the contemporary writer adichi right we've got chimamanda kosi adichi uh, chimamanda Ko- uh, adichi is actually talking about we should like you know this was actually a speech that she delivered it's available online watch this speech you get a lot of ideas clarified she says we should all be feminists this is a book we should all be feminists why she says feminism is not bad people have misunderstood feminism as feminism wants reversal of roles people have misunderstood feminism that we don't want a feminist bahu we don't want feminists right in our in our families that is what chinma uh, chinma manda adichi is talking about adichi is very clear adichi says that you know being a feminist is not an insult it is something that everyone should be don't take it as an insult if someone's calling you a feminist adichi says if you are a feminist you are championing the rights of women you are trying to make the world a better place for all the women who are marginalized for all the women who are suffering in the society right you are doing a noble act you are doing a noble deed by giving equal status to uh, all the members so she says that being a feminist is actually a noble act that you are doing because you are enabling the world to become a better place right and she is she is saying that these biological roles are of course there there are differences but we need to reform this entire approach towards sexism we need to create an equal equal world where there are equal opportunities available she says that imagine your own child your own child just because of gender not getting opportunities it is going to be unjust she says it's going to be criminal so adichi is trying to shake people up and she was one of the pioneers you know adichi's works are otherwise also important but adichi actually popularized that feminism is not an insult we must all embrace it so early feminists were also saying the same thing bhai if you are talking about enlightenment if you are talking about enlightenment of the world what is enlightenment what is enlightenment according to immanuel kant right according to immanuel kant immanuel kant mentions about man's emergence from self imposed immaturity man's emergence this is a definition that kant gives from self imposed immaturity this is an immaturity that is self imposed because man has not questioned man imposed immaturity man has not questioned the stature of the the society and therefore has been like you know perpetuating the stereotypes so immanuel kant will say so early feminists will say okay fine the self imposed immaturity is also for female we also need to fight and we need to make sure that political justice is just not related to men but also related to women and this is what adichi is also saying adichi is saying it's not a term of insult it's not that if you're a feminist you are you are dictatorial you are bad you will not consider men to be equal no you can be sympathetic and yet be a feminist because you want a better society for women 
it's not that you know you have to be really loud or uh, if you're a feminist no you just want to create a world that is much more conducive to women for women to live in so such a noble act so this is what the early feminists also wanted do remember that okay look at these works for example kate chopin's awakening these are the problems which will come with early feminism that early feminism unfortunately was for the white aristocratic woman only the early feminism was only for the white aristocratic woman who did not have to worry about bread butter cheese did not have to worry about going hungry at home did not have to worry about other things this is a criticism and the best novel that talks about this criticism is kate chopin kate chopin tells you the the story of edna pontelier and edna pontelier edna pontelier is able to talk about freedom intellectual rights she is able to talk about how i'm feeling stifled because she has a quadronomus quadronom uh, so she she's basically having like you know she's having an uh, a nurse to look after her kids she is having an aya so to say uh, which uh, an aya in uh, in babsi sidwa's i i scanty man right who knows uh, like you know she knows that okay she'll take care of my kids so i don't have to worry about them but what about the black woman who is actually her servant she doesn't have anyone so therefore she can't talk about feminism this is a problem with early feminism that only women of privilege white women aristocratic women could talk about these ideas right and get away with it easily right uh, barring a few such as afra ben look at these lines even as a child she had lived her own small life within herself at a very early period she had apprehended instinctively the dual life the outward existence which conforms the inward life which questions very important why have i chosen this line because you know we are all role playing according to feminism the way we behave in society is all triggered by notions of femininity masculinity imagine if a man is getting beaten up right uh, uh, if a man is getting beaten up if like you know i'm going over there to protect that man i might be perceived as masculine so and and then for a minute when i stop that oh you know i shouldn't go maybe i'll get hurt then i'm i'm adopting internalizing my feminine role whereas if if even if a man is like you know not heavy built but if a woman is getting beaten and he enters to protect her he's playing his role of masculinity he has to be the protector of damsel in distress so clearly remember that we are all playing our roles feminism says we are all role playing and this role playing concept is even more important when we talk about queer studies queer studies will say we all role play we forget our own individual selves right so this is the garment metaphor this is the garment metaphor that gets continued even in queer studies so queer studies will talk about androgyny will talk about transvestism transvestism androgyny in queer studies are all related to cross dressing right uh, so here you need to understand this garment metaphor which is important right look at this uh, another line from kate chopin's awakening she was becoming herself and daily casting aside that fictitious self which we assume like a garment with which to appear before the world that means if you are embracing feminism you are moving away you are casting away this feminist i will i will just um zoom this up so that you can see you are casting away you are casting away this fictitious self can you just see the word you know she was casting aside the fictitious self which we assume like a garment we are role playing right we are role playing at times right we sometimes have to act as uh, being foolish or sometimes immature in order to uh, like you know fit the bill of femininity right and there is another famous line over here but whatever came she had resolved never again to belong to another than herself very very famous line this is actually the end this is actually the end of what feminism wants you need to be yourself feminism doesn't says that you know don't like pink if you like pink you 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 continue loving it that's not what feminism is all about feminism says just question anything that is unjust just question anything which is actually done uh, which is not done in your favor right you should never ever belong to anyone other than yourself so if you love pink love pink as much as you want to feminism is not asking you to love blue 
but feminism is what what is it's talking about that you know you need to make the world a better place and that's the reason early feminists are important because this was their plea this was their concern all right so do remember like whenever we are talking about this lecture you need to understand that early feminists right they were actually in europe they were inspired by the political oppression that was taking place they were comparing the political oppression with patriarchal oppression whereas for americans they were being they were comparing the oppression of women with the oppression of slaves the times were conducive we we can ask that you know why the early feminists are coming during this age and not before because the time was adequate the time was right in europe people could associate with the ideas of enlightenment and french revolution and in america people could correlate with the ideas of slavery understand that that becomes important okay keep that in mind and mary wollstonecraft because you know no lecture on early feminism can actually be complete without the mention of our very own heina and petticoat she was famously called as the heina and petticoat by horace walpole horace walpole the pioneering writer of gothic fiction so she is famously being called as a heina and petticoat this is a net question that has been asked in your exams right she was fighting gender inequality in her own way the the wife of william godwin so she was getting inspired at home only with the ideas wife of william godwin william godwin talking about talking about ideas of political justice social rights equality political novel and she is being called as the heina in a petticoat heina in a petticoat people are saying she's wearing the woman's attire horace walpole says she's wearing he's being very bad and nasty that she's wearing a women's attire but she's a hyena hyena is considered to be cunning right so clearly you can see that you know wolstein craft is transgressing she's saying it's not transgression that is assertion of yourself it is not if you're not listening to patriarchy or bad you're trying to self you're trying to assert your own identity and assert yourself she was considered to be a social pariah she was a female intellectual women were not supposed to be intellectual during the time and therefore people considered her to be unconventional these are all epithets that we are using to describe her these are all words that we are using to describe her right so this becomes important please remember that absolutely absolutely pranav roy tony morrison very important anita desai good so gali right so gali is right okay so um uh, absolutely kavita kavita varma very good comments all of you are making absolutely correct comments so do remember she wanted to transform the society and early feminists are very committed to transforming the society they are very very clear that they want to transform the society look at look at the inspiration of the early feminists then we'll quickly wrap up the early feminists look at the writings of william godwin he's writing celeb uh, see so draksha these are the questions that will come caleb williams caleb williams is a work of william godwin caleb williams is a work of william godwin they will ask you this question these lines are coming from caleb williams draksha i will use no daggers i will unfold a tale i will tell a tale will with this little pen i defeat all his machinations uh, so caleb williams is like you know victimized he is wrongfully victimized he has been criminalized for a crime that he has not committed and caleb williams is talking about political justice william godwin is asking this question what is legal is it ethical also so it was legal that women will not get property rights but was it ethical also to just not give rights of empowerment to one entire section of your society that is the reason why the early feminists are getting inspired they are getting inspired by the tendencies that were prevailing in the society right these this is the context this is the context you have to write with your pen but remember that you know early feminists there are two types of early feminists like we looked at the pankhurst family the pankhurst family was activists early feminist activists and then you have the early feminists who are writing also okay and mary wollstonecraft clearly clearly you can see in the novel maria she is trying to compare marriage she is comparing marriage as confinement she is comparing marriage to be uh, similar to confinement she says marriage is nothing but confinement right she is drawing this entire notion so maria the the novel that she written was about a woman who sent to an asylum by her husband why because her husband wants a property This is exactly what is happening with Bertha Mason. Bertha Mason's property has been taken by Rochester in Jane Eyre and he has declared Bertha Mason mad. So look at the injustice of the patriarchal order that we can see over here. 
right these are important aspects that we have to be very clearly aware about wolston craft is intending her novel to be read as a novel about oppression of women right wolston craft wanted mary to be read as an oppression of women and how wolston craft's mary is getting the friend in a prostitute jemima so again talking about women's solidarity that women need to develop these bonds of solidarity which tony morrison as one of you said is brilliantly presenting in the works like beloved in the works like uh, the like you know uh, of course there, there are multiple other works of your um, uh, like you know your black american writers so for example color purple is a brilliant example of female solidarity there needs to be female solidarity right alice walker is saying womanism alice walker talks about the concept of womanism women need to come together so you know clearly whatever uh, these early feminists are talking about is a reality that becomes important and last we will just end this lecture over here please remember that you know she's saying that basically marriage was confinement uh, was not the world a vast prison and women born as slaves these are lines from mary wollstonecraft's mary mary wollstonecraft's novel mary marriage has bastilled me bastilled is a kind of a prison marriage has bastilled me bastilled is a kind of a prison Yes, Prana. It's talking about slavery and also about women's condition. Okay. Yes, yes. Of course, I will. I will suggest all the books. Don't worry about it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I think we are just running so much. All right. We'll continue from here. Don't worry about it. We'll continue from here. Uh, and uh, just make sure that you know if you're having any doubts, do mention it in the comments section. We will continue. I have another lecture, uh, so we will end it up over here. Thank you so much for joining in, and please take very good care of yourself. Thank you. Take care. If there are any doubts, please write in the comment section. I will definitely make a note of it and I will answer it in tomorrow's lecture. Take care. Bye.